Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. So on Sunday night, for the first night of Hanukkah, Ben and I got together with both of our families to light the candles, have a mystery Maccabee gift exchange, eat latkes and sufganiyot and brisket and play dreidel. It was a very special night and we appreciated it even more after spending the last few Hanukkah seasons in a combination of COVID lockdown and living on the opposite coast from our family. Perhaps you too, over the past week, have lit candles or spun dreidels with family and friends. Maybe you've made Hanukkah sugar cookies or worn a Hanukkah sweater or decorated your home with blue sparkle and banners that say Happy Hanukkah. All of these traditions, which have become associated with our celebration of Hanukkah, come from different places. Some are traditional, meaning they go back a long time, and some are more modern, meaning that they've become part of the American Jewish Hanukkah experience, but you wouldn't find them in Hanukkah celebrations going back more than 100 years ago. I want to look at one of our most traditional rituals of Hanukkah, the dreidel. Though we must admit that gift giving and Hanukkah sugar cookies and decorating one's home and Hanukkah sweaters are borrowed from American culture, I think we can agree to place the dreidel firmly in the traditional category of Hanukkah observances. After all, the letters on the dreidel represent the miracle of the Hanukkah story. Nes gadol hayasham, a great miracle happened there, or po, here on Israeli dreidels. So of course, this has to be a traditional Hanukkah ritual. And there are other traditional stories about dreidels too. The Jews played with the dreidel in order to fool the Greeks if they were caught studying Torah, which was outlawed. <clears throat> or that if you add up the numerical value of the four letters on the dreidel, they add up to 358, which means in gematria, in our um, spiritual counting of, of numbers and letters, Mashiach, Messiah. Or that the four letters represent four kingdoms which tried and failed to destroy the Jewish people. The truth is that all of these explanations of the dreidel as inventive and creative and related to the Hanukkah story as they are, were invented after the fact, long after Hanukkah was established as a holiday. The real story is that dreidel was a game played by many different peoples in many different languages for a long time, having absolutely nothing to do with Hanukkah. <clears throat> There was an English or Irish game from around 1500 called Totem that was especially popular around Christmas time with a four-sided top with letters that meant take all, half, put down, and nothing. Sound familiar? And here we are in 2022 playing dreidel, a ritual that to us is fully traditional, fully Jewish, fully Hanukkah. I'm not here to tell you that you should stop playing dreidel because it didn't originate as a purely Jewish custom. In fact, I'm here to say the opposite, to say how wonderful that we Jews were able to meet people where they were to integrate a popular winter game into our celebration of Hanukkah. And truth be told, Jews have always integrated the culture, language, clothing, names, foods, music, etc., from outside cultures into our tradition. As historian and former chancellor of JTS Gerson Cohen wrote in his 1977 book, Jewish History and Jewish Destiny, to a considerable degree, the Jews survived as a vital group and as a pulsating culture because they changed their names, their language, their clothing, and their patterns of thought and expression. Cohen argues that any teacher, any good teacher, must be not only steeped in the subject that they are teaching, but also in reality, in the current world that their students are living in. Only then can a teacher make the subject relatable and compelling. So too with Judaism. We must always stay relevant, and assimilation is part of how we do that. But of course, assimilation is not without its dangers. In fact, that is what the story of Hanukkah is about. The story of the miracle of a tiny drop of oil lasting for eight nights while sweet and spiritual 
was most likely fabricated by the rabbis in the Talmud. The true story, one that the rabbis were somewhat uncomfortable with, is a story of battle, a battle between the Seleucid Empire and the Jewish people, but also an internal battle, an internal battle between the Hasmoneans, the group of devout Jews that the Maccabees belonged to, and the Hellenized Jews, the Jews who had completely assimilated into Greek culture and left their Jewish customs behind. The Maccabees fought against the discriminatory laws of the Seleucid Empire that sought to erase Jewish practice and destroy the temple. And on Hanukkah, we celebrate their rather miraculous military victory. But they also pushed hard against the assimilated Hellenized Jews, making clear that they were not staying true to what it means to be Jewish. The Hanukkah story is really all about the fight against assimilation, which is why I think it's so fascinating that Hanukkah comes at the time of year when we are thinking most about the balance between assimilation and insularity. It's the time of year when you can't take one step outside of your home without asking yourself, should I put up lights? Are they Christmas lights? Or are they holiday lights or winter lights? Should I go to the Bryant Park Winter Village? Should I take pictures in front of the Rockefeller Center Christmas tree? Should I play Mariah Carey's All I Want for Christmas is You While I'm Cooking Dinner? <laughs> the month of December has to be the month most ripe for thinking about assimilation. How much should we stick to just the traditional Hanukkah rituals? How much should we engage in secular winter or holiday rituals? even in Christmas rituals? How do we strike the right balance? The Maccabees, much as we praise them as the heroes of the Hanukkah story, might not love the way we celebrate Hanukkah today. And I don't just mean that they would be angry with Jews who put up a Hanukkah tree, an imitation of a Christmas ritual, but that they would even be angry with those of us, myself included, who wear Hanukkah sweaters and put up Hanukkah decorations and make Hanukkah sugar cookies and exchange Hanukkah gifts, and even play dreidel, a game that the Maccabees would have never heard of. I want to be clear that though we here at Park Avenue Synagogue are not perfectly aligned with the Maccabees, we're also not aligned with the Hellenized Jews. We are distinctly Jewish. We care about our Jewish identity and Jewish practices. As Jews, we do not celebrate Christmas or any other religion's holidays unless, of course, we're invited to a friend or family member's home where they celebrate Christmas, and then we are joyful and respectful outsiders to a tradition not our own. But when it comes to the secular winter festivities that surround us at this time of year, we work hard to strike the right balance between tradition and modernity. That hard work is at the core of what it means to be a conservative Jew. So if we aren't just celebrating the most likely fabricated oil story for Hanukkah, and if we aren't just celebrating the Maccabees' victory because we don't perfectly align with their values, what are we really celebrating this week? What is this holiday about? And more importantly, what is this holiday about in 2022? We're celebrating two things. Number one, we're celebrating the opportunities and challenges and joys and struggles that come with striking a balance between assimilation and insularity. Because if a holiday isn't celebrating a struggle, is it really a Jewish holiday? <laughs> and number two, we're celebrating bringing light into the darkest time of the year. Literal light when we light the candles in our Hanukkiot, but also metaphorical light the way our festivities can light up our lives. You all are going to get tired of hearing me say this, but I spoke on Erev Rosh Hashanah about bringing sweetness, the honey of Rosh Hashanah, into our Jewish observances. Hanukkah is the easiest and most obvious example. So many families have traditions around giving gifts and eating special foods and spending extra time together. Lean into those traditions, and more importantly, Mold them into Hanukkah traditions, not just winter traditions. Let them light up your life. Whether they are traditional Hanukkah rituals or whether you made them into Hanukkah rituals, it doesn't matter. Dreidel wasn't originally a Hanukkah ritual either. 
Our special Hanukkah celebrations aren't just our way of fighting darkness. They're also, paradoxically, our way of fighting assimilation. By assimilating just enough to remain relevant, the fun and joy of being Jewish is so compelling that no one would want to become fully assimilated. By allowing our tradition to grow with us, we ensure that we will never outgrow our tradition. Shabbat Shalom.